Hi there. If you're a kid and you, like the Little Mermaid, love to listen to a good shark tale, want to free Willy or find Nemo, oh wait, there he is. Or maybe you're a fan of fish sticks going fishing or just think something fishy's going on, then this video is for you. Oh, I found him again. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another vegan nugget. I'm so excited to be making another video just for you. So far in my videos for kids, we've talked about why we don't drink milk, eat meat or eggs, or honey, or wear wool, how you can be a superhero for the planet, the people, and the animals by being vegan, and even heard from real vegan kids. You can watch all of those videos later if you want, linked there and in the video description below. Now just like in my other videos, I promise that I'm not going to show you anything scary, that I'll tell you the truth no matter what, and that I won't talk down to you, because you're super smart. Now in one of my other videos for kids, we talked about why we don't eat meat. When most people think about meat, they think about animals like cows, pigs, chickens, and other birds, maybe even goats and sheep. Strangely enough, fish are often left out altogether. So you may hear someone say they're vegetarian, meaning they don't eat meat, but they do eat fish, which is pretty silly when you think about it. I mean, does that mean that fish are plants? Have you ever seen a fish tree? Because I certainly haven't. If you do find a fish tree, definitely let me know. Well, vegans certainly don't eat fish. If you don't already know, being vegan means you don't eat animals or anything that comes out of them like milk, eggs, cheese, or honey, or wear anything from their bodies like wool or leather or silk. And the truth is, fish are animals, just like dogs, cats, cows, pigs, chickens, and us. But being basically called plants isn't the only way that fish get a bad rap. Many people think that fish can't feel pain. There are even teams of scientists who argue back and forth all the time with their big words and charts and graphs about whether or not fish feel pain. If you're super into science, I have a whole video about the battle of the brainiacs that you can watch here. But to make it simple, studies show that fish do, in fact, feel pain. And like I've talked about in my other videos for kids, if someone can feel pain, then it's not right to hurt them even if they do live underwater and don't look or act anything like we do. It's hard to know what a fish is thinking or feeling because they do look so different from us. When dogs are hurt or sad, they whine. When cows are really scared, their eyes get all big. When cats are happy, they purr. And even though we don't speak dog or cow or cat, or at least I don't, if you do, that's pretty awesome, we can still understand what they're feeling. But how do you know if a fish is happy or sad? If they're excited, scared? How can you tell if they hurt? Sadly, what scientists usually do to find out if someone can feel pain is they hurt them. And we humans have a habit of not believing something until we prove it. So even though fish have always felt pain, scientists keep hurting them. It's kind of like if the Earth was invaded by aliens from the planet Fishtonia, who looked totally different than us and couldn't understand what we were saying. And just because we looked different from them, the aliens decided that we probably weren't very smart and definitely don't feel pain or emotions. How scary would that be trying to tell them in the best way we know how that we do hurt, but being ignored because we're so different? That may seem like a silly concept, but sometimes the best way to know if what we do to animals is right is to imagine ourselves in their place. Of course, what's worse for fish than scientists hurting them to see if they feel pain is the whole rest of the world hurting them for dinner. A ton of people all around the world eat a ton of fish, and I mean actually tons and tons of fish. And because people think that fish can't feel pain, there are no laws about how they should be treated. It's kind of like finding your favorite food on your kitchen table, but when you take a bite, suddenly your mouth hurts really bad, and before you know it, you're pulled out the front door and underwater. That would be pretty scary, right? Well, that's what it's like for fish when they bite into hooks. And just like we can't breathe underwater, fish can't breathe when they're out of the water. So after they're caught, whether by a hook or by a net, 
They die very slowly and very painfully. The worst part is fish are even skinned and cut up alive. I can't even imagine how terrifying and painful that would be. Fish may not look like you or me, they may not scream or cry like we do, but even you and I don't scream the same way or cry the same way or about the same things. Different people laugh at different jokes. Some people will hide when they're scared, while others will act tough and pretend they're okay. In some countries, shaking your head means yes and nodding means no. And I don't have to tell you that different people look, well, different. But when it comes down to it, no matter what language we speak or how we shake our heads, we all feel. We can feel joy and happiness. We can feel fear and sadness. And we can hurt. And so can fish and cows and pigs and chickens, goats, sheep, dogs, cats, monkeys, camels, parrots, rabbits, iguanas, elephants, zebras, whales, rhinoceroses, platypuses, dragons, unicorns, jabberwocks, and bandersnatches. Oh, I got a little carried away there. But here's the important thing. Fish can feel pain. And hurting anyone who can be hurt is a pretty awful thing to do. They may not talk like Nemo and Dory, but they do have mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. They even form friendships, watch each other's backs, and are a whole lot smarter than we've always thought. But every year we humans kill about 2.8 trillion fish for food. That's a pretty huge number. Just think about this. This is an inch. If you walked for 2.8 trillion inches, you could go to the moon and back almost 94 times, or around the world almost 2,800 times. It's hard to even imagine a number that big. And it's not only hurting the fish, but also our planet. Pretty soon, there won't be any fish left in the sea. But here's the good news. You can be a friend to the fish and choose not to eat them. And you don't have to give up your favorite fish dishes. There are vegan fish sticks and vegan prawns and other options to choose from. No painful hooks, no being pulled from their home, no slow and scary deaths, and no being cut up alive. You can save them from all of that. And even though they may not be able to thank you in a way that you can understand, your choice will keep little fish families together. And that's pretty amazing. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. And if you have other things you'd like me to cover, feel free to tell me. If you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up and share it around to help other kids learn the truth. If you're new here, do hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays, and not to miss out on the rest of my videos for kids. If you're an adult and you want to help support Bite Size Vegan, check out either of the support links in the description below, or click the Nugget Army icon or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan! Ditch the fish sticks, and I'll see you soon. What do you call a fish with two eyes? A fish. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. I'm going to stop now.